view, January 1st, 2024. Sevon's behind the scenes just launched. I think it's behind his YouTube paywall. And each episode will be behind the paywall for two weeks. If you want to watch it, you have to subscribe to his channel, pay, um, pay a monthly fee, and you can have early access to it. I think in two weeks, every episode is launched to the public for free. It, it, I think there's eight or nine episodes total. I've watched the first four or five. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's just a behind-the-scenes peek at the CrossFit Games and the athletes and, and those involved. So if you're a fan of the space, if you're a fan of the athletes, if you're a fan of the games, it's definitely worth checking out. Recently, over the vacation or the break, I was um, talking to Sevon, and I asked him if there was any guests he was excited about any upcoming guests that he was really excited about having on. And he mentioned this lady named Jennifer Say. And so she used to work for Levi's and she wrote a book called Levi's Unbutton, The Woke, Woke Mob Took My Job But Gave Me My Voice. And so I listened to it on audiobooks. And uh, her story's pretty um, fascinating. It's a good book, it's a good listen. I didn't read it, I listened to it. It's a good listen or you can read it, I recommend either. And uh, she was standing up for schools being open during the pandemic so children could do in-person schooling and not be forced to stay at home, specifically in San Francisco, California area. And she was getting pressure from uh, within Levi's. She was the chief marketing officer, actually brand president. And she was getting pressure to not talk about it publicly um, because of her position within Levi's. And eventually they offered her um, a severance and they were going to let her go, but she decided just to quit instead, not take the severance, because if she took the severance, she wouldn't be able to tell her story and she really wanted to tell her story. Anyway, the, the book was really good. I enjoyed her perspective. I enjoyed um, kind of what she was talking about in regards to differing perspectives in that organization and very little tolerance for uh, differing perspectives or having a different um, way of thinking about some of the stuff going on during that period. During the same period where I, where I was listening to that book, specifically on drives, I listen to books when I'm driving, I was also reading um, my 54th and 55th book. So why I say that is last year, exactly one year ago, up uh, one year ago, I decided my goal for the year, not a resolution, but a goal for the year, was I was going to read 52 books. And my PR in 2017 was 50 books. I read 50 books that year. And in the past two or three years, past few years, I've read anywhere from 30 to 40 books. So not to that 50. Um, and I decided I wanted to read 52, so one a week. And I actually Fi uh, finished 55 books. So during that, I was reading my 54th book, and I actually brought it with me. The 54th book of the year was Upton Sinclair's book called Oil. And so why this relates to Jennifer Say and her what she was talking about with different perspectives, etc. So Upton Sinclair, I've also read The Jungle, which I really liked, and this book, Oil, which I also really enjoyed and really liked. Um, he's a socialist, or he was a socialist for a period of time, especially when he was writing these books. And a lot of his perspective on um, uh, society and, and um, uh, capitalism is not in line with how I believe or think, but it was still a really entertaining book and something that I enjoyed reading and something I enjoyed seeing um, or, or reading about his view on things. And I think that's lost. Like, just because it's lost in modern society where um, ha understanding the other side or consuming content from the other side or being willing to talk to people from the other side. For example, in Jennifer Say's case, one of the seminal moments, the turning points in her story was when she went on Fox News and like a lot of employees lost their shit over that and decided she was a traitor and betrayed, you know, uh, fundamental principles that they believed in. And anyways, um, my point is reading perspectives that are different from where you have or what your views are is actually a sh puts everyone in a stronger position and it gives them a stronger view on things. 
finished this book, really liked it. And then I actually, my 55th book, the final book of the year that I read was uh, Che Guevara, Guerrilla Warfare. And so Che Guevara is a well-known communist and uh, with Fidel Castro helped overthrow the uh, Cuban government at the time and put Fidel Castro and a communist regime in power. Uh, I didn't really get into the book. It was okay. But again, like this does not mean I'm a communist sympathizer or a Che Guevara fan. It just means um, I wanted to see things from his perspective, read his book. It's a, it's a very popular book and, um, and be open to seeing or consuming different ideas. I think there's a lot of people nowadays who are not open to seeing or consuming different viewpoints or ideas. A couple years ago, there was a phase where I was posting all the books I read on, on my Instagram account, and I ac actually posted some climate change books I was reading. Uh, those close to me know climate change is a, um, the topic is something I'm really passionate about and consume a lot of content on. And um, I read from all perspectives on the topic. And I post from different perspectives. And one of the books I posted was from one side. And the comments on that post were like, I can't believe you're supporting this. How could you think this way? Blah, blah, blah. How, how do you? And again, the consumption of content or the reading of a book of someone you might not necessarily agree with is not an endorsement of that side. And it was at that time, well, that was uh, several years ago, and I was blown away by like this notion of just because I'm reading about, and even a post, fucking even a post. I post a lot of things that sometimes I don't agree with. I think it's okay to post something uh, or post a book and talk about a book, even if um, it's not the stance you take on things. One other note, one other thing about Upton Sinclair that I wanted to share that was kind of cool. When I... Um, read this book and just started reading a little more about his history, I found out that he had actually in 1911 wrote this book, The Fasting Cure. So over 100 years ago, 110, 12, 13 years ago, Upton Sinclair was writing about fasting. I have not read this book. I will read it soon, but um, kind of cool. Uh, those of you who follow me know I'm dabbling and i um, really interested in fasting and, and see the benefits from it for health. And so over 100 years ago, Upton Sinclair wrote a book called The Fasting Cure, Reset Your Body. Obviously, this is a modern um, printing of it, but excited to read this. This year, I am changing perspectives or approaches with my reading. I am not going to uh, try to read 60 books this year. I'm gonna focus on a few books and really dive into them. The first book I'm gonna start with is the Bible. I have never read the Bible and I, um, I'm very interested in, in reading it and um, understanding some of the themes, some of the stories. And the big, the big thing that is driving me to the Bible is the fact that um, I really do consume a lot of fiction, classics specifically, and they, um, so many of them refer to the Bible or have themes inspired by the Bible or tie back to the Bible because of its significance in history um, that I just want to have more awareness of these stories and of, of the different themes within that text. After that, I want to read the Quran. And so I will read the Bible, the Quran, and probably... Um, a few other religious texts just out of curiosity and wanting to understand um, the different perspectives from some of the different seminal books in religion. Okay. Um, comments. At night code 7681. Dave, the open is coming up again. From my perspective, the enthusiasm from the community for the open has waned in recent years, especially when, when compared to years in the mid 2010s. There are likely many reasons for this. One area that I felt could always be improved and foster more community interest is the experience of the online leaderboard. For example, currently there isn't a great way to compare yourself against your friends, especially if you are different 
affiliate, etc. I don't care if I got 80,123rd place. I care about how I performed in comparison to my friends. The open score participant data is public. Would CrossFit be antagonistic to someone creating another free leaderboard experience to help encourage more open engagement? Do you feel like this is an area of the open that could be improved? Asking for a friend. I do feel like our leaderboard is a big area that can be improved and should be improved. And we're actually looking at ways to improve it in the future because fundamentally some of the things you're talking about, the comparison nature of it is where a lot of the fun and value can happen in doing the open is actually, um, you know, I should be able to search within like who's the, it would be cool if I could search within five miles, who's the fittest within 10 miles, within 15 miles, within my city, um, or how I rank to those even within rings. And then obviously facilitating intramural leaderboards and facilitating just, um, competing and comparing against friends, groups, or others is definitely something we need to, um, up our ability with the leaderboard to facilitate those things in. So I do agree with you. I think um, we're definitely going to look at that realm and hopefully we can invest in, in making it, but it's not going to happen this year, but in um, the next few years, the next several years. At racer014 slash WB9GC, it's Greg's fault CrossFit has gone downhill. Dude, when did you become a victim? It's Greg's fault CrossFit has gone downhill. Dude, when did you become a victim with no accountability? I did not say it was Greg's fault that CrossFit has gone downhill. That's you twisting my words. I actually said one perspective that could be had in this is anything that is happening now is because Greg sold the company. Um, I said that's a perspective. I didn't say it was mine. I just said it's a specific it's a, a potential way of thinking about things. So pay attention and don't, um, don't act like I'm playing the victim with no accountability because I'm not. At W Thibo, T-H-I-B-E-A-U. Dave, what is CrossFit doing right now to fight against spreading occupational, occupational licensing reform that would end CrossFit's, would end life as a CrossFit trainer as we know it? So our team, Marshall Brenner, our legal team, they're staying on top of it. There's one in particular that I think you might be talking about. It's um, the Athletic Trainer Registration Committee uh, summary of AB 796 is this committee will be responsible for registering, licensing athletic trainers, investigating complaints, and taking disciplinary, dis disciplinary action against those who violate the law. It requires, okay, here's, requires athletic trainers to be supervised by a licensed physician or surgeon. This means that athletic trainers can only practice under the direction of a doctor, ensuring patient safety and appropriate care. In California, people cannot use the title of athletic trainer unless they are licensed by the state. It broadly defines the practice of athletic training to include things like injury prevention, evaluation, and diagnosis of injuries rehabilitation and providing education on exercise and health to athletes starting in 2028 people cannot engage in athletic training unless certified by the state so this seems to be exempted under section 2529.8.13 for crossfitters because of personal training services so crossfit would fall under personal training services of this law and it seems that crossfit gyms in california are exempt from this Th this is obviously an incredible so we're saying this doesn't apply to crossfit trainers um, we are watching and this obviously is an incredibly slippery slope so we are paying attention to the, some of these licensure um, proposals or laws or things that are popping up at this point this one doesn't affect crossfit trainers but could that morph in several years into something that is um, more oversight for CrossFit trainers? Yes, it could. And would we fight it? I sure the fuck hope so. So um, we have an obligation to, if it were to go that route, but at this point, it doesn't seem to. So we are paying attention. It is something that is a concern and it is something that we should watch. All right, as always, post thoughts to comments and um, I will respond to those next week. And if you're interested in the games, go watch Sevon's Behind the Scenes and uh, check that out. 
All right. Thanks.